Hello everyone, this is Dr. Speranza and today we're going to be working on how we can translate compound statement into its symbolic form. So the compound statements that we had on the previous lesson would be the conjunction, disjunction, the biconditional and the conditional statements given by the following operations. So knowing these operations and this, these symbols that is associated with this particular operations, it's a lot easier to translate statements from symbol to English form and vice versa. So let's say we have two statements that we need to translate or transform into symbolic form and vice versa. So in this particular example, we have two statements. Statement P, which is she is wealthy, and Q, she is happy. And if we're going to be using the two statements and, trans and compose a compound statement based on the three problems that we have. Notice that all of these are in symbol forms and if we're going to translate this in something that is more comprehensible in English way, we'll be able to do this by incorporating the operations that we have learned in the lesson. So in this particular example, we have three operations that we're using, the negation or not, the conjunction or end operation, the or operation which is the letter V, and we're going to be using that inside or in this particular problem. So let's start with problem number one, which is we have a quantity of P and Q and then the negation of the entire parentheses. So just like a math problem, when we are working on the distributive property, we know that we can distribute the negative sign inside the parentheses. And we can apply that particular rule in symbolic logic so we can distribute the not symbol with P and Q giving us a statement as negative p or not p and not q where p is she is wealthy and q is she is happy so if we're going to translate it using the symbol it will form into she is not wealthy and she is not happy so this is the english translation of our symbolic logic which can be used in our second statement wherein we have a basic statement of not p and Q. So what we're going to do is to negate the statement P, she is wealthy, and just copy statement Q using the end operation. So our statement would be she is not wealthy and she is happy. So for problem number three, just like what we did on problem number one, we can distribute the negation symbol and notice that we're no, we're no longer using the end operation. This time we're using the or operation. So our translation for this compound statement would be not P or not Q or in English form, she is neither wealthy nor happy. So this is how we translate symbols into an English form similar to how we translate one language to another. So the more words we are learning on a foreign language, the more words we can translate it to English. So just like a symbolic logic, the more symbols that we are understanding, the more English statements or compound statements that we can form based on the symbols. So let's say we have three basic statements. P, a student misses lecture, Q, a student studies, and R, a student fails. And if we're going to be using a more complex compound statement such as this, we're going to be working on the dominant operation. And in this case, the dominant operation here would be the if-then statement given by the arrow. And we know that if there's an arrow symbol, we are using an antecedent going towards consequent. And there, these are the two basic statements inside the compound statement that we are looking right now. So in this case, we're using three basic statements and inside the parentheses, we have Q and not P. So if we're going to group them together and group the other group of statement, which is the consequent, which happens to be negative R or not R, we can translate our parentheses into a student or a student studies and not P, which is does not miss a lecture. So that is the English translation of our antecedent. And if we're going to translate our consequent, which is not R, it is simply going to be a student does not fail. And if we're going to put them all together according to the compound statement in symbol form, 
Q and not P, then not R, is going to be if a student studies and does not miss a lecture, then the student does not fail. So this is how the antecedent, which is the parentheses, and the consequent, which is not R, is going to be formulated in English form. Now let's have the same set of statements, and this time, let's have a new set of symbolic operation. Now the symbolic statements that we have is Q and parentheses not P, then not R. So now that we have the parentheses in our conditional statement, what we can do is to work out the dominant operation right here inside the parentheses, which is the if-then statement. And if we're going to translate the parentheses, it would be if not P, then not R. So in English, or using P, Q, and R, it will be if the student does not miss lecture, then the student does not fail. So that is our parentheses and our basic statement Q happens to be a student study can be formulated using the operation Q and the parentheses which will have a student studies and if the student does not miss lecture, then the student does not fail. So this is how we use these symbols in this particular compound statements that we are working on. So you need to understand about the dominance connective and in this particular case, the conditional and biconditional statements are the dominance connective or in which case takes a higher priority when it comes to the grouping symbol. So when we are seeing the conditional and biconditional statement given by the arrow and the arrow with two endpoints or two ending going to the left and going to the right, we'll be able to uh, figure out which one we're going to put inside the parentheses and which one is the dominant operation. So Take a look at example number one. We have P, or if P, then Q, and not R. So notice that our conditional statement will have the antecedent and the consequent. So in this case, our antecedent is P, and our consequent will be Q and not R. So that means we can group the antecedent Q and not R, giving us this particular statement P, or if P, then parentheses Q and not R. So this is how you formulate your statements that's not inside or you're, you're not seeing the parentheses, but you can put the parentheses knowing that you know which one is the consequent and which one is the antecedent. So let's apply this particular rule in working out this particular compound statement and transforming it into its symbolic form. So P will be I fail the course, Q I study hard, and R I pass the final. So in this compound statement, we are seeing I do not fail the course if and only if I study hard and I pass the final. So look at all the operations in this compound statement. We have the negation, we have the biconditional statement if and only if, and we have the end operation in this particular statement or compound statement. So if we are going to be looking for statement P, statement Q, and statement R, it'll be fail the course, study hard, and pass the finals, and those are P, Q, and R respectively. And you are seeing now that our biconditional statement, which is the dominant um, operation, will give you the consequent and the antecedent. So we are going to be grouping our consequent right here, or neither consequent or antecedent, which is Q and R, and put it inside the parentheses. So if we're going to translate our compound statement using parentheses, this is how we're going to work it out. So this is how we use the symbolic form of our compound statement using the operations that we've been using from the previous lesson and in this compound statement lesson.